Today's morning coffee vinyl side. Various artists, Pal Joey, 1951. Pal Joey was a Broadway musical written by Lorenz Hart and Richard Rogers, first staged in 1940. In many ways, the play, based on a character developed in a series of New Yorker magazine pieces by John O'Hara, was written to be naughty. A sex romp where the naughty was situationally implied through the presence of the characters themselves. You have the unrepentant cad, Pal Joey, the dime store nightclub MC looking to level up. He's on the prowl for both sex and opportunity, and there are three types of women in his orbit. Strippers, older married moneyed women, and young innocent virgins. His daily bread comes from the stable of dancers around him, and it's implied that these are his regular partners. His interest is piqued by the virgins, presenting the choice of true love with a morally pure woman at the expense of his ambition. And the married moneyed women who are willing to trade money for sex, they present him with the flip side of that equation, the choice of prostituting himself to get his material desires filled. Now the play has two types of songs, throwaway plot-moving narrative devices of no particular musical value or distinction, and a few thematically strong, stand-on-their-own compositions, the most famous of these being Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered. Now the album is a studio cast album, recorded ten years after the fact. Ten years after the fact because the songs were banned from radio play in the 40s, due to their adult themes. Now, when that ban was lifted, they recorded this album, and the play was revived many times. Some of the songs became beloved standards, and they eventually turned the whole thing into a feature film in 1957 with none other than Frank Sinatra in the role of Pal Joey. Of course, there's a plot in there, too, and it all goes to hell and high water for Joey, but he's not defeated with a big moral lesson learned. He's just had his deck reshuffled. He'll play again. He remains both the Joker and the Knave. That ending was part of what made the play so transgressive in 1940 and so appealing in 1957.